So I have some notes, and then Eileen also had some notes, and then we decided, you know what, we can do something a little differently. <laughs> um, and I think we're both slightly nervous um, to do this because we, we're just going to try something different. And it so, convinced me that I'm excited and not nervous. You're exactly, we're excited and not nervous. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so uh, we will see how all of this unfolds, and we'll probably touch on a variety of topics. And um, if you do have a question, the plan is to set aside some time uh, at the end for the question. So if something arises that doesn't get addressed, um, the encouragement is to try not to fixate on that the next 30 minutes <laughs> and miss everything else. Um, but know that there will be uh, some time later uh, for some questions um, for Eileen, who I have a great uh, amount of respect for, I just want to say. Um, you know, you'll see all these leaders out there running companies and most of them are wanting attention and it's all about them and their vision and their way and how they did it. And um, I just, both through your presence and who you are, I feel very comfortable mm -hmm. and I feel um, that there is a subtlety and a um, quietness mm -hmm. and a depth that doesn't need to be um, like proven, but that I feel around you. So I just want to say I'm really excited uh, to be uh, with you today. Oh, thank you. You might be feeling my fear and my withholding. And my <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but thank you. Yeah. Or my hiding. Or my <laughs> um, so I'm curious, what is it, uh, and I'll speak to myself too, but um, what do you notice just in this moment from being here and um, in your body, in the room? Um, I notice uh, that my heart is pounding, just pounding, <laughs> and I feel, I feel, I feel some terror, some fear, um, but I, I also, <laughs> um, but I feel some opportunity and a, and a sense of rightness, and, um, some kind of sense that that I'm in the right place, that, that I'm supposed to say something, and I'm not sure what it is. So yeah. I, we'll see what comes. You know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I notice for me, I, um, I, I, it's always interesting to notice what I walk into the room with. And so part of me walks into a room, like right now I can feel it's like, I really want this to go well so she's happy at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Which creates a certain tension, right? Like, I just want her to have a good time. You guys, eh, so much. Um, <laughs> but, but, uh, but there's I that. I the there's, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, and them a too. there's a little bit of tension around, like, uh, how do we create this thing? Um, and then um, I noticed, too, this, this um, desire to fill space and to just make sure, oh, that was a great question, or like, oh, I put out this, oh, that was a fascinating question. And just to, like, all right, can I just let that go, right? And can I just relax and um, be present? So I noticed there's some tension around that. And, um, and uh, there's also, anytime there's an interview I do, there's a subtle tension that says, you definitely don't want empty space, right? Because you're not doing a good job if there's quiet, because people are expecting you to give them information. Um, so I notice there's a voice in my head right now that's like, all right, can you just invite silence? And then invite kind of what wants to happen um, versus trying to make something happen. So I'm in an inquiry right now internally about what that is. And I don't think I've actually ever done it with somebody like this consciously. Mm -hmm. or I've actually, I usually try to do something else goes on. So. Um, I'm going to stop talking for a moment mm. and see what happens. Mm. Mm. Uh, so I have this uh, actual habit of um, kind of shutting down, uh, this kind of blankness that happens to me a lot, um, that actually is sort of my edge right now, that I'm realizing that um, in a lot of situations I... Um, my therapist has called it dissociate, I sort of disconnect, or I go into some kind of fear and 
it's like I can't get my mind to work. Mm -hmm. So um, what I'm doing with that is sort of, uh, I'm leaning into it. I'm um, trying to know, like I'm trying to wiggle my toes, but I wore these high heels, which I don't ever <laughs> wear. <laughs> and I can't wiggle my toes very well. <laughs> But I notice when I do that, it sort of wakes my mind up. Um, but it kind of brings me to the embodiment mm -hmm. edge. And I was thinking about when uh, I was out in at Wisdom yeah. in California and uh, just how inspiring it was. And mm. I just was feeling some gratitude. Mm. Thank you yeah. for the work you're that you're doing and what you're trying to bring into the world. And I, I love kind of synchronicity, things that happen. Yeah. And when I was there, uh, someone, uh, I, I, we did a, a breakout session, and someone kind of pushed a book toward me as he was leaving, and I... That happens at our conferences sometimes. I know, it happens all the time, I'm sure. And usually I, it's like, okay, great, and I take the book, and I think, where am I going to put this? I have to carry it. Okay, um, but I took the book home, and it was called What's My Body Telling Me? Wow. And um, the man's name was Siskel, Steve Siskel, I think. Okay. And um, it just really started... Uh, um, getting me to think. Mm -hmm. So what is that? And what, what's happening when I shut down? Mm -hmm. what am, am I afraid of something? Or mm -hmm. what can I do? Or what's this other... Just like starting to notice the different feelings. Of, yeah. You know, tension. What's mm -hmm. this tension in my neck? What's it telling me? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? <laughs> and, and trying to figure out how to move through it. So that I can be open to what's trying to come. Right. Yeah. I, 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 I'm just coming up with another experience for some reason that seems relevant. So because I have this shutdown all the time, I often go to places, conferences, meetings, and I don't say so much. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes that's really good mm -hmm. because I get to listen, and you learn so much more <laughs> when you listen. Um, but I go to the Clinton Global Initiative every year, and I'm very intimidated mm. when I'm there. Um, and I almost never say anything. And the first time, um, this was before I read the book, but I started to note, I was starting to notice this, these feelings in my body. And so I was at the conference, and it was a session on impact investing. And, and I remember that I was sitting in my chair, and all of a sudden I could feel this tension in my back, and then I, I just relaxed the tension. Mm. And all of a sudden, I raised my hand, I popped <laughs> up, I said something. I don't even know where it came from. Afterwards, people were coming up and saying, I loved what you said. That was so amazing. <laughs> and it was... Something else said it. Something else came. It was like it came through me. It was yeah. so... But it, it required a shifting of your bodily experience or an attention yeah. to that. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. It's interesting, isn't it? And I imagine as the, I know your job recently shifted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now Eileen I'm, Fisher, you're the chairwoman. I'm the chairwoman. Okay. Not just the chief creative <laughs> officer, I'm the chairwoman. You're the chairwoman. <laughs> um, but in your other roles as CEO, founder, chief creative officer, all these we different roles. We just have so much trouble with titles. Yeah. With the it's just like. Um, but most of those roles, people look to you for answers. Mm. Right, and so my guess is most people in those roles would assume that well, if people are asking for an answer, I must have one to give, <laughs> and I should know the answer. Mm. Versus being able to share from more of a personal experience right. of the body and of the thoughts and of an honest like, wow, when you say that, this is what experience is. This is my experience, oh, good. and I think there's a tendency to suppress that and to say something that would hopefully or potentially meet their expectations. Oh, give an answer. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to answer that. Right? No, no, <laughs> because I'm, I really am much more about asking questions. Mm -hmm. You know, when someone looks to me to give an answer, I tend to respond to the question, yeah. which I think has gotten annoying. That's why I got, <laughs> I got the chairwoman role, because people <laughs> want me to make some decisions, for God's sakes, you know. So that moves. So there's 1,200 people at Eileen Fisher. Yeah. And every day, decisions. Somebody there's a decision. 
some decisions no. are made, right, at some point? Okay, now we're going to talk about the shadow side <laughs> of collaboration, yes. Well, okay. we can talk about whatever, but... Um, <laughs> no, no, good. Go ahead, is ask it, the question. I guess the inquiry I would have is, is there a genuine way for decisions to emerge? Yeah. And how... And I know that you don't know the answer to that. No, but I'm curious, like, in your explorations, are there some pieces that might help us give us some clues on ways that we might step into the decision emerging from a field versus a decision yeah. that's um, given yeah. by a person, even though that's probably needed at times. Right, um, right, right. Both are true. And my experience is that actually we've, we've, we've worked very much in circle, and it's been quite amazing how many decisions do seem to emerge from the center of the room. Um, we, we make a point in our meetings, you know, that, every, that we hear every voice, and it just does seem that many decisions just have a sense of rightness when everyone in the room is heard. Um, it's, uh, it's very interesting because right now, um, Though that's true, that as we've gotten larger, uh, like I just, um, it's gotten more difficult mm -hmm. because we want to include everyone, mm -hmm. but now that we're 1,200 people, um, it's just not possible mm -hmm. to include everyone all the time. People are always left out. So um, what we're having to do is take this collaborative process that we've been working on for 10, 30 years probably, <coughs> to another place because, and I think it's sort of what happens every stage. Every time we hit a different stage, it's like we have to figure something else out. Mm -hmm. So in a way, I'm sort of thinking of it as like we're, we're sort of mixing the feminine and the masculine a little bit. We're, mm -hmm. we're looking at how do, how do we um, uh, create collaborative decisions and then how do we um, actually move in a more efficient way. Mm -hmm. So how do we decide who gets to make which decisions mm -hmm. when? Mm -hmm. how, how, and so that's sort of the process. Actually, okay. that's yeah. our edge right now. That's where we are right. figuring out. We certainly, we certainly have roles, and we certainly have titles, and we certainly um, have responsibilities, although there's sometimes uh, not so much clarity always mm -hmm. about that. Um, I just want to back up because I just want to kind of honor the, the work that we have done over these 30 yeah. years about yeah. this collaborative process, yeah. even though we're seeing the shadow of it right mm -hmm. now. So the sort of cumbersomeness of it, um, it's, it's worked so yeah. beautifully. Yeah. And, and, and I want to say one other thing about process. So some of it is the slowing down, the listening. Mm -hmm. You know, um, someone, one, uh, uh, a person who's been working with now, uh, with now for, I'm not sure, five years or so, said that when he first came around, um, he thought all this collaboration was, you know, just a little much, all these Help people you. in the room, and how, do you, how are you going to do all of this? Um, but he, he came to realize that it's kind of amazing. People really listen to people. Um, people actually don't interrupt people here. He said, that's the most unusual thing. <laughs> I was thinking about the exercise that Joe yeah. did earlier. And you know, just that simple thing of listening to someone for two minutes mm -hmm. and listening to the other person for two minutes, mm -hmm. you know, that's such a rare yeah. experience. Yeah. And we bring that kind of practice into our meetings all the time. Yeah. We almost we rarely have a fairly large meeting where there isn't at least, you know, a, a dialogue walk, a one on one kind mm -hmm. of conversation where people are reminded, listen to that person for a few minutes, and then we're going to switch to the other person. Right. So that people walk away with that most amazing experience of feeling heard. Yeah. And stuff still happens? Stuff still happens. <laughs> well, actually, what's very Clothing interesting... Clothing is created. We still, Sharon was just reminding me, yes, you still make the clothes. Um, but that's actually what, what, what grounds us, you know, that we do still have to actually make decisions, mm -hmm. um, and we have to move forward. I want to say something more about that, um, how, how, how it actually happens. Yeah. <laughs> the, well, one the is realities. probably within the relational realm. Um, yeah. 
because there's an energetics. Like I feel like I can try to work stuff out with somebody, uh -huh. but if I'm not actually speaking about, oops, sorry, if I'm not actually speaking from my own experience of fear right. or frustration or truth, or truth then um, I just try and do it mentally. And yeah. I think when you really hear somebody and you receive them, right. it's a different level of community. And my guess is that would be infused in the products you create and in the things that you do and would hopefully reduce some of the conflict and some of the you know constant turnover and stress and all the yeah. stuff that oh. can happen at big companies. Yes. Um, well, in a way, it's like meditation. It's supposed to make us more peaceful and, mm -hmm. you know, and in fact, it does, but it also deepens and, and enriches our experience. Mm -hmm. So what's actually happening at the company, I don't want to say there's more conflict, mm -hmm. um, but there's more uh, engagement and more mm -hmm. richness and more depth of, of mm -hmm. possibility, more um, more interesting things going on, more complexity, mm -hmm. much, much more. And you invite it. And, so and we mean, invite it. Like, yeah. I just want to maybe try to give an example of where, like, mm -hmm. back to the embodiment piece and what we're trying to do now, okay. what I see happening. So, uh, for example, in a situation where, um, like, we, we, I'm trying to, how to tell, tell this story without naming names or, um, <laughs> It gets a little tricky. Person A? Uh, person A. Okay, so here I'm in a situation where I'm trying to understand something. Mm -hmm. And so what I often do is ask questions. Mm -hmm. um, but it comes to my attention that my questions are sounding critical. Mm -hmm. So, oh, I'm getting some feedback that my questions are sounding critical. Mm. So what, how, do, how do I do that? So, um, but I still want to ask the question. Yeah. So I want to lean in. And I want to get at the truth. Mm -hmm. um, so over the years, I think that uh, that there's uh, let me tell this story. How do I tell this story? Let me think. Um, so I had this person who's presenting uh, all the positive things that are happening. You know how wonderful everything is, <laughs> and how good this is, and how you know um, how you know. Uh, this is going to be risky here, but okay. So um, the person will come into a meeting and say, you know, mm -hmm. oh my God, last week um, we had such an amazing event in the mm -hmm. stores. It was, business was so, you know, we had the best event ever. Mm -hmm. And then I'll say, that's fantastic. How was business for the week? Oh, it was 3% down. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So where's the, so. What are they telling so, you? Then I'm going, uh-oh, what, what are they really yeah. telling me? And what's happening for me? Yeah. So I'm feeling frustrated. I'm probably communicating that in my mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. I'm probably being, sounding critical. Mm -hmm. So um, then I realize I need to talk to this person. So mm -hmm. separately I talk to this person and say, you know, um, okay, this is a hard conversation, mm -hmm. but um, I need... I need, I, I, I like positive, that's great, mm -hmm. but I need it to help me understand the truth. Right. Because understanding the truth, and not just me, but everyone needs to understand mm -hmm. the truth. You know, if business was down 3%, let's not talk, yeah. let's say the great event yeah. was great, but let's also say business yeah. was down 3%, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Mm -hmm. So, because we need to look at the truth in order yeah. to, um, uh, to, to do better, to yeah. figure out what's not working, yeah. rather than walk away everyone thinking, oh wow, that's right. great. Right. We don't get at what isn't right. working. Right. Um, and that person no doubt has his or her, her? was it a her? It was a him. Oh, well, okay, his, the, his her. <laughs> um, person probably has their own fears and stuff yeah. about like, I want to yeah. really make Eileen happy, right. I want to tell like her the whole good, good news. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Walk away happy. So they think they're doing a good job, right, by telling you what they right. think the you want to hear, but yet it's underneath. Right. And I think that's one of the pieces is how do you invite more of the shadow or the underneath or like when Joe did his exercise, like what are you not saying? How are you showing up? Oh, we're all collaborative, but I actually hate that person and I don't know right. how to say it. Right. Um, <laughs> and so right. what does a community look like? And it feels like you're in the middle of that. Like, um, like learning to show up 
Yeah, with kind of more honesty about mm -hmm. the feelings that are underneath, right. so the embodied piece. So, mm -hmm. okay, so I'm noticing that I shut down. Like another thing that happens to me is that sometimes when people talk a lot because I'm a quieter person mm -hmm. or I almost have some kind of a processing thing sometimes. Mm -hmm. So. I'll be just like, whoa, whoa, where do they go? And I'll be like, oh, off there thinking something else because I can't keep up or something. Yeah. And so what I realize is that I'm starting to notice that I'm feeling annoyed. Or you I'm notice feeling, it in your body first? I, I'm, that... Now, this is, this is my edge right now is wh where do I feel that? Like I, yeah. I recognize annoyance, annoyance, what's that feeling? but I can't quite get the embodied yeah. feeling yet. So this is the edge I'm working on so that I hopefully can start to get the signal right. earlier. Right. So what does annoyance feel like? Where do I feel it? So I can't answer that question. That's okay. So That's once awareness on. hits it, how, what are you exploring and doing with that? Right. And does it change based on the situation? And right. So, um, so for example, I'm like not, like not being able to process so many words. So, um, so then what I'm trying to do now is I'm meeting separately mm -hmm. with people. When I start to notice something, I'm, have, I'm like feeling annoyed or I'm feeling frustrated or I'm not getting the, tru the full truth here. Mm -hmm. So then I go, let's meet that person and talk mm -hmm. separately and go, you know, I just need to tell you that sometimes when you're talking, it feels like too many words. Yeah. And so I experience the sense of shutdown. Yeah. And so maybe you can help me with that. Yeah. Uh, if you notice that I'm mm -hmm. shutting down or, you know, ask me. Yeah. Or maybe I can just request that you slow down a little bit yeah. or turn to me occasionally and ask, did I get that or right. something? So, yeah. um, but it's but bringing I can, that person in as a team member in your right. own process right. versus, yeah. So the idea is to sort of create some kind of awareness. Mm -hmm. so, um, so the other person right, it, uh, gets maybe some self-awareness. I get yeah. you know, more awareness. I get more some feedback than maybe yeah. of like, oh, Eileen, yeah. are, are you, where, where did you go? Are you getting what I'm saying? You know? And I think the art is, the one approach is shut the hell up, you talk too much, right? <laughs> right? right. So that's one approach. Another approach is just to suppress and pretend right. that we understand the Which person. Which I'm really good at. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I'm really, gonna, really I'm good gonna, at. I'm good at that too. I'm working on it, <laughs> working on it. Um, and there's this middle way that yeah. sounds like that brings in your own experience without judging them as different, but it's also letting them know when this happens, this is my experience. Right. And then um, letting a connection emerge right. through the sharing of that. Right. So then it's starting to sense a freeing up of energy somehow right. between people and a more capacity to yeah. trust. Because I think they feel it anyway. Yeah. You know, they yeah. feel what you're feeling. Yeah. People pick that up. Yeah. Like you're looking at the way people look. Right. <laughs> what is that? Yeah. So yeah. then if yeah. you notice it, like sometimes I notice somebody looking at me like that. And afterwards yeah. I go, I wasn't sure. I felt like you were yeah. kind of not agreeing. Were you not agreeing? That's okay. Yeah. You tell me yeah. what you didn't agree or didn't yeah. understand. Yeah. 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 So uh, I'm wow. here. I want to open up for questions. Is this making uh, any sense? <laughs> we'll open up for questions. Um, <laughs> I just, I, uh, for me, I would love, um, I wish you could like run the country personally. <laughs> oh, God. That would be terrifying. Um, <laughs> Because that's the, the thing we actually don't have is listening. Oh God! And yeah. um, and a willingness to understand another's perspective. Mm. And I feel if you look at the culture, it's uh, I had a friend who used to call it male answer syndrome. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's both sexes, I think. Um, but it's that quality of depth and of listening. Mm. And um, I feel like that as a, a leader is so rare mm. in a way. Mm. Um, mm. And so I just respect your your both excitement and struggle with trying to kind of forge a different path. Yeah. Which is like, all right, I'm not going to suppress my feelings and I'm also not going to pretend. And I'm right. going to see what is that other way of being. And my sense is the qualities that people are learning in your company will make them better parents, make them better yeah. partners, make yeah. them better aunts and uncles, make uh -huh. them better because that is life. Mm. 
Mm. Right? Yeah, that's my favorite thing when people say the company has changed my life. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Sometimes people say the clothes have changed my life. I like to hear, <laughs> I like to hear that too. You can say that. <laughs> now I like hearing that. It's, it's very interesting. And, and I just want to point out that we're really on the edge with this. This, yeah. is, this is new. We're trying to break new ground. We've yeah. been. We've been doing, uh, and I think one of the things that we've identified recently is that we're known as a very kind, collaborative, mm -hmm. nice mm -hmm. place. <laughs> and nice is not enough anymore, yeah. you know? It's really not enough. Yeah. And so how do we, I always quote Mother Teresa when she says, um, tell the truth with kindness. Yeah. And I think tell the real truth. Yeah. And that's really hard. Yeah. That's really, really hard. Particularly for people who think they're nice. Right. <laughs> right, and want everyone to like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Be liked. So we have a few minutes uh, for questions. If you raise your hand, uh, there are uh, mics, and are you just choose. I don't know unless Eileen, you want to. We can't really see people's faces. Um, I so. saw. I saw one here. Uh, this one here. Is there one on? Hi. <clears throat> if you say your name and where you're from, it just Jennifer. Helps us. I'm from Los Angeles. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. Um, I've been following you for a while. I grew up in fashion retail. Oh, so wow. it's so wonderful that you're here. And I so appreciate the dialogue you're having. What is curious for me, um, I'm a little nervous. Good, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I notice that when I get the thought to want to ask a question, the nervous begins then, so it's been building. Yeah, that's good. Um, so listening is something that I've been really focusing on myself, and I'm feeling very like embodied with this idea. And there's a book that I've been reading called More Time to Think by a woman named Nancy Klein. Huh. <clears throat> and she talks about um, these 10 things. And she talks about the main thing is, that she says is, imagine what people would say and share if they weren't worried about being interrupted. Mm. <laughs> and I love what you were sharing about, I hear a sense of like ownership and responsibility that you're modeling and working through that process. I'm curious, because I also worked on the side of you know, seeing the leader and experiencing you in this format, not working for you, and then also people that are in the environment of working for you and wanting, wanting to please you, also probably being very inspired by the mission of your company and all their stuff that has nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, how are you, how are you um, or are you teaching or um, training your, if nothing else, your leadership team? Yes. Yes. on how to be this so it's not just you very good. by yourself. Very good, very good. Thank you. Um, perfect question. Um, uh, so right now, actually, someone, uh, I have a, a, a leadership person that I brought from Brazil. His name is Marcelo Cardozo. And um, he's working directly with me and the leadership team around exactly this work. He's working with embodiment. He's working with helping people to speak the truth to each other. He's actually starting with me, and some of the conversations I'm talking about are coming through his you know, support to, to push into those conversations. So the other thing that we're doing is he's now working with the entire leadership team. We also have another coach who works with the other, some of the members of the leadership team, um, and uh, bringing this deeper, it's really deep personal work into the midst of the leadership team. And the next team we're targeting is the people and culture team. So we have a team of uh, 25 or so people that do that work. And so he's been working with them now, uh, um, I think several times where, uh, and, and the idea is that they will then be the ambassadors of this work throughout the company. Um, and we're also simultaneously offering, I, we started a learning center uh, and mm -hmm. it's just, in the process of opening. And one of the things we're doing there is offers, offering pers pur purpose and personal transformation work there for the public and also for our employees. So it's going to be, we, the idea is to mm -hmm. really to take it out there. And, and so we should thank let, you for that question. Yeah. When your public programs launch, we should let everybody know. Yeah, as, yeah. As the public program. There is one purpose program that will, you could check our website. Uh, it's Island Fisher Learning Lab. I think it's up. Is it up? Okay. Uh, so there's, there's a purpose workshop by Marcelo in November, I think. I don't know the date, but you could check the website. Yeah. 
Uh, one more uh, question, and um, Eileen, are you somewhat around today? I want to say one other thing because sure. this keeps coming up for me that a few years ago, you know, when we started to, to prepare to do the learning lab, uh, the company was wildly successful. We had two years in a row, record years, wild. And when we started to prepare to do the learning center, uh, it, I thought we were going to share our collaborative processes mm -hmm. and all the things we've been doing. And when I started in <laughs> to do that, we started looking actually at what is the leadership program we currently have? What is it we really want to share? And we decided it wasn't quite good enough yet. It wasn't going deep enough. So that's the work that we're, right. we're headed at right now. That's anyway, go ahead. So Next you want to deepen that and share it. Yeah, and so we decided we wanted to deepen it before sharing. So right. we're getting ready now share what we don't even, we aren't pervasively actually fully doing yet in the company. We're doing lots of wonderful things, but this is another, this is a deeper level. Hi, my name is Marlene. I'm from Hadley, Massachusetts, and I shop in your Northampton store. Oh, <laughs> I love my little Northampton store. Um, my son a, went to Hampshire College, so I yes, used to hang out there. I live a couple miles from there. Oh, from what that a sweet college. town. But, um, so I was in that, that store about a month ago, uh -huh. and I shared with um, one of your employees there about this gathering that I would be here. Um, and I was just fascinated about the, the feedback that she gave me about working for you and in your store. And she said she's been there for 15 years. Mm -hmm. And she sees families and family members and friends coming and going from jobs and complaining about their jobs. And she said she's, she stays there because she feels valued. Mm. She feels important. Yeah. And so I wanted to give you that feedback because I feel that's um, coming from your frontline staff, you Thank know. You. And um, so what you're doing is trickling down, and it's amazing. Um, and one other comment on your vision 2020. Oh, um, thank you. Thanks for mentioning that. That is extremely inspiring. And I just wanted to thank you for the work that you're doing globally. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, that's Do you want to speak to that briefly? And then sure. I um, as she just mentioned, we have a, a huge commitment around sustainability. Um, and this is, I think, again, it's rising out of some of the personal transformation mm -hmm. work that's beginning to go on with some of our leaders, that they've just taken up this work in such a deep way that, you know, um, we want to make all of our clothes sustainable. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a 2020 vision, um, and what we mean by that, it's a little, it's, we, we mean that, well, the team means that everything mm -hmm. about our clothes will be sustainable by 2020, but actually that's not 100% possible, but we're going for it, so that we only get to 98 or 88 <laughs> or wherever we get to, but we're saying no exceptions. As, mm -hmm. as our pathway, and we've made huge progress in the last couple of years. Like from and from where the like, whole process of, yeah. of the clothing yeah. creation. Yeah. Exactly, like almost all of our cottons at eighty eight percent or something are organic. Our linens are organic now. Our our wool, we're taking the chlorine out. We're it's just it's uh, the dye. We're changing the dye process. We're getting into the factories in China and. You know, just shifting things. It's 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 like oh, there's so many people. There's now this is purpose. People, yeah, yeah. the teams are so unbelievably passionate. It's very exciting. Thanks for mentioning that. I get to promote it. Thank you. Yeah. So our time uh, is up. So oh, I want to thank Eileen, and um, she might be around at breaks. I don't know what your schedule is, but um, I think I have to. Yeah, you might be. She might. You might a little bit. See her a little bit. A little yeah, bit. But yeah. I want to take some. I wish I could to thank stay. you and thank you for all you're doing. And thank you, Soren. Yeah.